Welcome to the complete collection of Larry Bird's greatest stories told by NBA players and legends, part 2. If you have missed any of the other episodes in the series, including part 1 of Larry Bird's greatest stories, there is a playlist link in the description and on the top right corner of your screen. If you click on that link, you will find all the episodes within the complete collection series. If you enjoy these types of videos, and if you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate if you guys could hit that like button. These videos do take me a long, long time to edit, so I'd really appreciate all the support. If you are new, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification button so you stay up to date with all the new videos. Feel free to comment down below which player you would like to see next. And here's the collection of Larry Bird's greatest stories told by NBA players and legends, part two. Uh, Larry Bird talked a lot of shit. This name keeps coming, Bird. He goes to the right, Bird. He makes us right, Bird. I said, God damn, who is Bird? Bird tough to defend, why? Because he looks slow as shit to me. So he's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm missing something. He was talking so much trash. Uh, during, uh, during the dream team, and that's how we, we it started. So while Larry's in the air, he's got the ball right here, and he's screaming at Chief for not setting the pick. And I'm like, uh, Larry Bird talked a lot of shit. I like to, I like people to talk shit to me. Cause it is what it is. Yeah. I ain't, I don't have no I don't have no me I don't hold no grudges. I ain't got no feelings about it. Bird talk shit shit like what? like like we talk Let or me like. Let tell y'all something. Bird used to tell me, look here, man. I'm gonna go shoot this motherfucking jumper in your face right there in that corner, and it's gonna be your Christmas present. I'm gonna wrap it up and bust your head open. All that shit. He was the coldest dude I ever seen with that shit, man. Everybody be talking about these great greats. They don't be always mentioning him. He was the shit. Yeah. The shit, man. He'll give it to you any way he wanted to. Any way he wanted to. Larry Bird was cold. I never forget driving, and I'm listening to a game. It's New Mexico State playing Indiana State. Now stay tuned for Indiana State basketball with Bob Forbes live from Las Cruces, New Mexico. I don't really care about the game, but I, New Mexico State is right up the streets from El Paso, and I went to UTEP, and we're big rivalries, so I'm hoping that Indiana State will beat New Mexico State. And I'm listening to the radio, and I have no clue of the players on either team. All of a sudden, this name keeps coming, Bird. He goes to the right, Bird. He makes the spot, Bird. Bird finds the corner to Bird. Bird. Larry Bird with the ball. Larry Bird. I said, God damn, who is Bird? Bird. You know, here's Bird. And Bird this and, and Bird. Oh, did you see the pass that Bird made? Bird has it, lost it, and throws it up close to Carl Nick. Got a breakaway, and he's got it. I can't see it, but I'm just trying to imagine it. And I. I when the time I got to the end, I said, damn, that brother can play. Damn that brother. Hey, let me tell you something. When I got the newspaper the next morning and saw Larry's picture, I said, damn. Larry, they wasn't you, you, you know, be honest with you. The young lady that say you were her favorite player? Mine too. I love you too, Magic, but not as much as I like Bird. Because I asked a lot of questions. You know, playing with Byron Scott, I asked him a lot of questions. Eddie Jones, who was great at chasing guards off the screens, and I didn't understand how to do that. I would sit with him before practice, after practice. Um, Magic, um, James Worthy, Kurt Rambis, Kareem Abdul, all the Laker greats, I would always sit down and just ask them questions about certain games that I studied growing up. What actually happened there? What did you feel there and why? You know, Bird tough to defend, why? Because he looks slow as shit to me. So he's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, I'm missing something. When I got a chance to actually play against him, he was bigger than I thought he was. Uh, 
and uh, a lot more competitive than I had given him credit for at that time. Mm -hmm. I'm missing something, so like, tell me what I'm missing, you know what I mean? And so I would always ask questions and try to learn as much as I could. Well, he, he would never give up. He, he didn't want to quit. He was not a loser. Uh, Larry was going to do whatever it took in his power to uh, get a win. That competitive nature, the work ethic. Whether it be the assist, the score, as you see right there, or uh, the loose ball diving out of bounds for it, or that real tough, hard, aggressive word to his teammates. That's the uh, leadership qualities that Larry provided for his ball club. And so I would always ask questions and try to learn as much as I could. <laughs> right? Uh, no? Oh, it's uh, a different generation. You guys probably so never even good. seen Larry Bird play, which yeah. is... Just How many have seen Larry Bird play? Hey, everybody's seen Larry Bird play. Right. That's, that's not a high enough percentage. We got uh, we got some work to do. But uh, Larry was a consummate professional because he would go out there and just play the game. And uh, I think when you're the best that come out of that, that, that means that you're on the top. And yeah. I, Larry had always felt like that. I was one of the first ones to play Larry. And I'll tell you uh -huh. a quick story before I ask you the question was, I'm sitting there playing Larry my first game ever. And I was like, everybody else. Larry comes on. I'm averaging 19 points a game before Larry gets on the team. So I'm in the arena. Larry comes into our practice facility. I give him the slow clap. Here he comes. Great white hope. White hope. <laughs> I'm getting guarding this dude, man, from about 15 feet away. He knocks down the jump shot. Now, I'm working him on the offensive end because, you know, he, can't, he couldn't guard me or anybody else. Uh -huh. And he just knocking down shots. I walked out of that practice that day, the first black person I could get to, I said, you know what? A fucking white guy can play. <laughs> and, that, and, and that was it. Uh, these guys came in together uh, in 81. There's Kevin, there's Larry, there's Robert. Dennis Johnson, Danny Ainge, they knew what each other could do. And what I did was said, okay, let's see what's, what's happening out there. And you'd see uh, Larry shooting a three-pointer. And then I call a timeout. Called a timeout and he diagrammed a play. But, and they didn't count the three-pointer. So he's very upset with that. So I diagrammed the play. He says, heck with the play, Case. Give me the ball until all the rest of the guys get out of the way. I said, shut up, Larry. <laughs> I'm the coach here. OK. All right. Then you take the ball out and give it to Kevin. Then you throw it to Larry and everybody get the hell out of the way. Celtics are down by two points, and Bird is out by the three-point line, and he's being guarded by a guy named Johnny High. And Johnny High is sort of backing away from Bird, and Bird says, hey, Johnny, you better come up and, and, and guard me a little closer. I'm just going to get the ball and shoot a three, and the game's over. You know, Larry not only tells me that, he walked by the bench and says, you know, typical Bird, he's just real slow. Yeah, I'm just fixing to bust a three on you guys and just go home. I'm tired of this. <laughs> Fixing to bust a three on your guys and go home. And, you know, Johnny High sort of, sort of smiles and laughs about it. And I was supposed to cut off the high post and post up for a second and then go across and, and set a pick. Well, I came off the pick and I was wide open and I stood there waiting for the ball. I had a smaller guy to post up and, and Larry just waved me out of the way saying, get out of here, get out of the way. And then true to his word, we're, uh, in Phoenix, he goes down uh, before the ball is thrown in. And he's standing right in front of the Phoenix bench, and he looks at all the guys on the bench and says, I'm getting the ball, I'm going to put it in the hoop. <laughs> and he says, uh, watch my hand as I follow through. <laughs> and so he breaks the play. And then the ball comes in the bird. He just turns around and shoots a perfect three. And from that time, I learned uh, to run Larry's play, not the coach's play. <laughs> The ball, is, the ball is thrown into Kevin. Kevin gets to Larry. Larry fires it up, puts a hand in the air as he continues on to the dressing room. Now, that's what you call arrogance. <laughs> Bruce Hurst knew the Celtics because he was friends with Danny Ainge. They had played Major League Baseball uh, together and against each other. He would come to practice. He knew McHale. He knew Bird. He knew Parrish. He says, those Celtics... They were so secure in their own greatness. There was none of this, who's getting more touches. They had fun. They had fun at practice, competing against each other. They knew how great they were. And this all comes out, you know, the kind of trash talking you're talking about with guys whistling. and Actually, you know Mike Saunders, the trainer of the Knicks. Sure. 
Larry was banking threes in Madison Square Garden before a game because he was getting bored. He won the three-point thing three years in a row and started banking them. And <laughs> banking three-pointers during, during a warm-up before a Knicks game, and the trainer said it was Saunders. He said, Saunders said, you can't do that in a game. And Larry said, if you give me five bucks, I will. And sure enough, they get way ahead of the Knicks. And then he, he banked one in at the end of a game and ran down by the bench with his palm out. He banks the three, runs by the Knicks bench with his greedy palm extended. <laughs> and uh, where's my five bucks, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> love stories like that. He was pool hustling <laughs> during the games. Absolutely love stories like that because his he he was the legend. La, that's that's part of the legend of Larry Legend. Nineteen eighty-eight. That had yeah. to be one of the conference best semifinals. Neek and Bird. You the know, duel. You and Larry Bird. Playoffs. The battle, one of the most clutch mm -hmm. moments. I remember watching it as a kid. It got me hyped. I went outside and started shooting outside <laughs> of the playground, yeah. pretending I was both of y'all. I remember Bird made a prediction at the end of that I game. He said, game. I guarantee a win. Atlanta blew their opportunity. And I'm like, hey, I don't know what Bird talking about. Mm -hmm. I, we have a great opportunity. We going in there. We going to kick their butt. We coming to win. It, it, I don't care what he said. If you guys ain't ready to fight, you ain't ready to go to war, don't even come to court. Unfortunately, Bird was telling his teammates the same thing in the other locker room. <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of set up for that great game. But re I'm going to tell you, and I really believe this, the reason why Larry Bird got so hot in that game in that fourth quarter, Kevin Willis and I and Bird was running down the court, and Kevin reaches across me and puts his finger in Larry Bird's chest said, don't let this so-and-so score anymore tonight. And I looked at Kevin. Uh, what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> Leave him sleep. Hey, hey, Let him stay asleep. Sleep, yes. <laughs> you know, it's like his eyes got this big, and I knew it was on then. <laughs> I said, I knew it was on. And when, when you talk about the clutch shots, he hit 10 clutch shots I was gonna in say, that game. Yeah. You had 47 in that yes. game. Larry Bird had 34, but 20 of those wow. in the fourth quarter. So clutch is not just the final yeah. three or four seconds of a game. And the thing is, we were sending everybody at him to slow him down. He was so hot that I think one of the shots he hit was a left-handed three. And it's Bird. That's when you know a guy mm, is yeah. in the zone. Mm, yeah. Larry Bird hit more clutch shots, you know, in pressure situations. Lead to Bird off the fake. Improves his point. Bird cuts free. Left hands it. between the two of them. It's Bird's turn. Bird snaps free. Comes up with the shot. Gets it into Bird. Than any play. They told yeah. you about each and every one, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He would call the spot. Yeah. yeah. You know, but he never called a spot against me. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, that's kind of best respect. In this period, he has hit his last six field goals. And as far as Larry Bird is concerned, it's Detroit. Here we come. Smartest player you ever played with? With? With. Dennis Johnson. When DJ first come here, I didn't know how to react because I didn't know how he was going to play. I knew he was a great player, but I didn't know if, you know, if we'd be able to get along on the court. He seemed to be playing the game on a higher cerebral level, and nowhere was this more apparent than his on-court chemistry with Larry Bird. That's a set play off the backboard. What a beauty! Johnson bounces it to Bird. That was a set play. They were in, in sync when they played. Another great play. Dennis Johnson to Larry Bird. I can't tell you the number of times when he and Larry would make eye contact. Larry's guy would have his head turned, and DJ would just throw that ball right by his defender's ear, and Larry would just catch it and lay it in before the guy knew what even happened. Smartest player you ever played with? With? With. Dennis Johnson. Best player you ever played with? Uh, probably Dennis Johnson. DJ, I thought, was our... Uh, a guy I love to play with. He, he thought the same way I did, and, and he's pretty good. These two had that unspoken communication on the floor, even down to one of the most famous plays in Celtic history, the Game 5 steal against the Pistons in 87, where Larry grabbed it, and DJ knew in an instant before anybody else on the floor what was happening, cut to the basket, winning lay-in from the left side. You didn't know? In a, in a second. <laughs> so it's appropriate that these two have their numbers displayed alongside each other. And now there's a steal by Bird. Underneath the DJ, lays it in. Right up, one second left. What a play by Bird. 
Rick, you played in some amazing games that you won. You played in some amazing games you lost. The one I'm going to talk to you about is a game that I thought you guys had when you had the Celtics all but beat. Because I remember you running down the sideline, punching your fist, because you, you guys had made the steal, and you thought it was over. No, what, what happened was I was running down the sideline, shaking my arm, like, because I, I caused the turnover. Yes. It, it, was, it was like, yeah, we got him, we got him. So I'm looking at the bench. I'm looking at Chuck Daly, and Chuck was calling timeout. But Isaiah, we talked about this on, on another show, Isaiah ran. I'm usually the one taking it out to give to Isaiah, but he ran and grabbed a ball. He had, you know, a brain fart, and he threw it in, and that's when it was like, oh, hell no. The most vivid example of the Bird-DJ connection came in the 1987 playoffs against Detroit. It's often referred to as Bird Steel, but many still marvel at Johnson's brilliant instincts. But that was game five. And we going like, what, what, what? And, you know, you're looking at it. I, we, Zeke, and we talk, it's like, Zeke, why you take the damn ball out? It, that's my job. That's what I do. Stay I'm in your lane, that. bro. Stay yeah, in your lane. lane. You, I'm trying to get the ball to you. So I run over. We, we look at the bench. No timeout, nothing. So I run over and I grab the ball. And this is probably one of the most incredible plays that's ever happened against me and that probably I've ever witnessed. From an athletic standpoint, two people being in sync and just Bird just playing every second. And that's what the Celtics taught us, to play every second. Not to play 47 and a half minutes, mm -hmm. but to play a full 48. So I grabbed the ball from the referee, Lambeer's a good foul shooter. I never had taken the ball out. I, that wasn't my thing, right? I, I, I throw it up. Bird sneaks in. I didn't even see him. But the thing I remember the most is that Joker. This is the out of bounds line. <laughs> that Joker caught the ball, and in my mind, I'm like, okay, he going out of bounds. That dude did this like a ballerina, right? And if you go back and you watch the play, that dude is on his toes. The the. The baseline is right up under his toes. And in my mind, he must have stood there for about five seconds because <laughs> every, everything was going in slow motion in my mind, right? And then and it's like, I'm like, and then it is, it's, it's just a strange moment. I'm like, damn, how are you doing that? <laughs> Bird made a great steal, but DJ made a great cut. Underneath the DJ right and it all happened in, 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 within a split second. As Bird is going to get it this way, he's already reacted like he's in Bird's mind that he's going to steal. I mean, I was like, oh, and then boom, I win. Just as I got it, I'd seen a, a white jersey streaking down uh, towards a basket, and I turned, and it was DJ, of course. Bird steals it! Johnson, way up Boston, one second left! Oh, my, the fight is going crazy! He's a big play man. He, he makes um, big plays when you need him. Man, once he stole it, it was like it took the wind out of our sail. Was that eventually maybe the game that you said you were the most disappointed about? I did a great defensive play on Bird. And yes. It was like it went, over, went, went right off Larry. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, I was like, I was excited about oh, just, you know, I need him up because here's the thing. Before I beat him up, man, Brad, I remember when I switched out on him and he yelled out, hey, Mayhorn, you on me? And I hate when somebody called me Mayhorn. <laughs> that uh, looking at me with his, that old shiftless shit grin and Bird went like, you on me? Clear. <laughs> I said, all right, okay. I, I, I said, I'm going to get you. And that right there made me you going like, yeah, I finally got him. Because he, you know, you know, you know, he's a bad boy. Yeah. I ain't never gonna disrespect him. So, you DJ coming down, right, with the ball. Oh, great DJ, that's good. <laughs> so pass it to Larry, he's in that corner. So as you pass to Larry, my first job was to stop you first, right? Now I gotta go out and close Larry Bird out. So as I'm running out to Larry Bird, he's talking trash to me. <laughs> 
I don't know why you running out here. Who says that in the middle of the game? He said, I'm going to wait, wait till you get one step away from me, and I'm going to shoot it right in your face. No, true story. So I got one step away. He shoots it all net, three-pointer, good. Then he turned to me and said, you did all that running for nothing. <laughs>
Scoop, don't write about that. I eat just as bad as anybody in this team. He says, he says, I hate, I hate staying in shape. When, when my career's over, I will be the fattest fuck you've ever seen. He says, you know, just look out below because I'm, I'm, I'm done watching myself on this. And one time he had during the late in the career when he had the bad back, he had to miss about a month, and he came back, I don't know, seven or ten pounds heavier. And he said, he said, I was eating wedding cakes every day. And we said, what, why would you eat a wedding cake? He said. Who's going to fuck up a wedding cake? He said so. So he ate wedding cake. Just the way he, his logic, when we were on the road, he'd, he'd say something like, like you or I would say if we were living that life. Like, it'd get, it'd get back to the bus after practice at the LA Forum, whatever. He'd say, okay, we just got through shooting baskets. Let's get in our free bus and go back to our free hotel and eat some free food. He says, well, this life in the ABA, if you don't like this, there's something wrong with you. And again, who among us wouldn't think that way? But none of them ever say something like that. And I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did and you would like to see a part 3, let me know down below in the comment section. Please leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, hit that notification button, and I will see you guys in the next video. Here are two videos that you might enjoy.